Hey, I'm Tom Mealy. I'm with Madhouse TV. This guy just walked up the steps. I don't know. What the, what, what is the story with you? I'm Come comedian on. Frank Prince. Hey, what the hell do you want here? I want my own reality TV show. You think you're funny enough? Hell yeah. Well, how much money you got? Short arms and deep pockets. You think you can make it? I'm the Myron J. Show. You think? I think. All right. I know. We're going to give him a shot this spring here on Madhouse TV. Tune in and wait for... Frank Prince, the Myron J. Show. There you go. We'll see you this spring. We've got a ton of new shows coming up. My pal Frank Prince, great comedian. Wait to see him. Tune in to Madhouse TV this spring. Have a wonderful day. Boo! Welcome to the Frank Prince Show. I'm your host, Frank Prince, on Madhouse TV. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank Tommy Ma and Tom Mealy for doing an awesome job. All right, there you go, Tom. <laughs> of having me on this show over here. Yeah, Tom, thank you. I have two special guests with me today. I have Vanessa San Marco Arroyo and Patrice Del Toro. Mm -hmm. Said it right? Yep. Good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, welcome, ladies. Hi. Thank Hi. You. Nice for to having see us. you. Thank you for coming on my show. Thank you for having us. You're welcome. It. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us a little about yourself, Vanessa. All right. Well, I've been a singer and musician my whole life. And um, uh, my sister over here uh, has been a musician her whole life also. Um, she's from Texas. And I've been raised in New York my whole life. And we met for the first time on Tuesday. Wow. I never met my sister before. Four days ago we met. I didn't even time. know you had a sister mm -hmm. until we spoke. Yep. And we're doing a show together tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we put a band together called Sister Sister. Wow. And it's for ba uh, BACA, which is Bikers Against Child Abuse. It's at uh, the, uh, Richie B's Diamond Club in Ronkonkoma. There's going to be about five, five other bands. And uh, what they do is these bikers, they... Uh, they watch over children that have been abused, and they uh, they help. They go to court, and they they pretty much uh, try to um, get the perpetrator behind bars and whatnot. Right. But uh, yeah, so we put a band together and um, over the phone basically. This and is uh, amazing. Yeah, we never like I said, our dad was a uh, professional figure skater, so uh, we're ten years apart, and. Uh, he used to tour all over the world and whatnot. So she was raised in Texas, and I was in New York. We knew we knew we had a sister each, but we never met. Crazy. I'm still blown away. Yeah. You you both are here now. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, uh, let, what uh, are you feeling, Patrice? Well, um, two and a half years ago, I was diagnosed with breast cancer, and. Um, had to have surgeries and reconstruction and all of that, and it just uh, loomed pretty large in my life, you know, in my mind uh, that, well, you know, I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to let Vanessa know, you know, that this has happened. She has two daughters, and, uh, you know, that's a question that they ask every woman on every questionnaire in the doctor's office is who in your family's had heart disease, who in your family's had cancer, and that kind of thing. And it becomes a more critical situation when someone's had breast cancer for any other women related to that person. Mm -hmm. And so I had tried to find her before, and I, I, she wasn't, several years ago, she wasn't on Facebook yet. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't, she had moved, didn't have a phone number, didn't know who to contact. And because uh, we'd talk for a while and then 10 years would go by. Mm -hmm. And then we'd talk for a while and then 10 years would go by. Then the internet gets into the picture, you know, our mode of, of communication expands. And this time I found her. Well, the crazy part is that uh, my first name is spelled differently than most Vanessa's. It's V E N E S A. Now, we were both born with the same birth name, but 
what happened was my mom had gotten remarried and my father, my stepfather, adopted me and changed my name to his name. Patrice couldn't remember what that name was. And then I had Samarka was my adopted name. And then Arroyo was my married name. So she didn't know that either. So what she was doing was going on Facebook and um, going through all the Vanessas that were spelled V-E-N-E-S-A. And I'm on Facebook one day and I see a private message. And it says, hello, my name is Patrice Del Toro. I'm looking for my sister Vanessa. Could you be her? Blew me away. <laughs> totally blew me away. And I'm like, wow. She left her phone number. I called her. I got her voicemail. And she called me, got my voicemail. And finally, we started yeah, to talk. Yeah. How long did it take you to find her? Once I posted that, it didn't take very long mm -hmm. at all. Uh, so, and we just, we just took it from there. We ch exchanged phone numbers, and, and we would talk from time to time. And uh, one time we actually talked for seven hours. I yeah. found it. <laughs> seven hours on the phone. And this is the thing. It, from the very beginning of our first phone conversation, you would have thought we were raised together and mm -hmm. grew up together and fought over bedroom space in the same bedroom and things that sisters do, you know because there there was never a gap strangely mm -hmm. enough no nope. and 10 years would go by we hadn't talked and then we talked some more and you know and it was like no time went by mm -hmm. it it's just a an amazing thing and then the fact that separate from each other we're playing in these rock bands we're doing some of the same material there's mm -hmm. just so many things that are alike right. And we have so much experience between the two of us. We literally talk through the rehearsal. I'm going to say 80% of the rehearsal. We've had one two-hour rehearsal yep. to really put it together. Yep. She just told me the tunes. I did my homework. I play keyboard. She plays guitar. And because we knew what to do anyway from being in other bands. And um, just came together. It's the energy the attitude, all of it is just, it's just right there like it's always been like there. it's always been there. And she's staying with me. She's here for a week. Uh, well, maybe I can convince you to stay longer. <laughs> but um, you want me to stay longer? Yeah, longer. All right. <laughs> Actually, we were going to call, the, we were thinking of calling the band Sister, Sister. You know, because we obviously don't sound the same. Because I say sister. And I go sister. <laughs> yeah. Sister, sister. But uh, yeah, it's been it's been a, a, a really crazy roller coaster ride in such a short period of time. Yeah, it um, absolutely has been. You know, like I said, my our dad was a professional figure skater. I lived uh, in Germany for all over Europe for about four years. My father was on tour over there, so for about four years, she never even saw. No, he didn't see dad. I just had, they, they sent me a picture of you as a little girl. Yeah. That's all I had for probably about 20 years. Yeah, yeah. So we yeah. went to Germany, and uh, I came back to the States when I was about four, four years old. Um, but, like, once again, we had never met, and uh, it's just been uh, wacky. Yeah, you know? yeah. She knows, and, my, and our dad was, uh, like I said, like a rock star on ice. Uh, her godfather's Tony Bennett. And uh, yeah, yeah, I, they ran. They knew everybody. You you had tons of celebrities uh, well, around your house. And stuff. Yeah, if your parents are in show business and you're raised in show business, then you're always around other people in show business and right. show business kids and things yeah. like that. Yeah. You know, it's just it just goes with the territory. But uh, yeah, so that's uh, yeah. she's played with many great people. Play with Steppenwolf and well, I played with well, some of the guys from Steppenwolf, Stevie Ray Vaughan. <sighs> Run into us. I just for I I can't even re remember them all. Uh, you know, some of the guys from Blood Rock and just, just a lot. Lots of people lived in Hollywood for a long time, and I lived in New York actually for a year when I was in second grade. And, and here's the crazy part: we were both born in Chicago. 10 years apart. Because yeah. at that time, our dad was touring in Chicago, and 
At first, I think I thought you were born in Europe, because that was the first I knew of you, kind of. Yeah, no. And that was the first time I got a picture. And then after That's that, I thought, well, I guess she's born, probably born in New York. And I really was surprised to find out you were born in Chicago. Chicago as well. And we actually brought our birth certificate. Yes, we did. To prove to everybody. To prove. Yeah. Same Del Toro, Manuel Del Toro. And That's right. There, they are. there it is. People don't believe it. I don't <laughs> even believe it yet. I don't believe it. Because who meets, who meets a long-lost sister and then at, at one, one day and a week later plays... A, a concert, concert together. together. I mean, it's just, even we look at it going, this yeah. is just yeah. pretty amazing. <laughs> and the funny, the funny thing was um, when we went to the airport to go pick her up, a friend of mine came with me, and he kept looking at me, and, he's, and we're waiting for the people to come off the plane, and a woman would walk, you know, walk towards us, and he's like, is that her? I go, I don't know. I don't know what she looks like. I never met her. Another woman would come by. He's like, is that her? I go, I don't know. I've never met her. <laughs> so the only thing that I really knew was her was when she started walking up, she had a pocketbook, and it's the shape of a guitar. And I said, that's got to be her. <laughs> needle in the yeah, I go, that's got to be her. She's this cool chick with this great-looking, you know, pocketbook, the shape of a guitar. And sure enough, it was. So, uh, yeah. And like I said, she's staying with me, and it's like, like she said earlier, like we've been raised together our whole lives. You know, like so we're like, it's meant to be. Yeah. It's like, I feel like we're like two teenagers at a slumber party or something like I that. I know, <laughs> I know. You exactly. Know? And exactly. everything has just been wonderful. And she plays keys like Edgar Winter. She doesn't play. She's got the whole thing hanging have on a hand her neck. keyboard, yeah. Hanging it on her neck. And uh, she knows what to do with it, that's for sure. Oh. <laughs> How long have you been doing that? I started composing when I was about four, actually, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I got serious about it uh, probably about 15. I started really composing songs with intros and verse chorus and everything. And then uh, about 17 or 18, I started being in bands and stuff. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, and I hung around the guys at ZZ Top, and you know we were Dusty and I were girlfriend and boyfriend when we were like 14 and 15, and hmm. that's how I think that's how I really got involved in knowing other musicians and going with them to the gigs and stuff like that, and 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 then I eventually was playing in there too, and mm -hmm. um, so it's just been my life all all my life. Uh, that's that's all I've, I've really known, other than you know the obligatory day gigs here and there and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But I lived in Hollywood a bunch of times for years at a time. Lived in Santa Fe, New Mexico, New York City, but mostly Texas. We sound alike, don't we? Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Forget about I'm, it. I'm learning. <laughs> I'm learning. Yeah. She does have to say, forget about forget it. About <laughs> I told her, but it's all one word. You know? <laughs> forget about it. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. You know, the funny thing is also, um, our dad was Puerto Rican. So he had a little bit of a Puerto Rican accent. And uh, she had the Texan accent. I'm the New York accent. Um, our dad got married a, a third time. Yeah, right. <laughs> And uh, his wife was English, so she had an English accent. And we have another brother that lived in Florida, so he had a Floridian accent. So for all of us, we were like the UN. If you sat us all around a table, you, everybody would be like, there's no way that you guys are related. Uh, yeah, there's yeah. One, Nobody would one just thing to put that together and go, yeah, that's an obvious thing. Though. Yeah, no, <laughs> absolutely not, absolutely not, you know. And so she met two of my kids yesterday, two of my three children. She met them. And I go, this is your Aunt Patrice, and uh, she met her niece and nephew, and uh, yeah, it's, we're having a blast. It's great. Can't wait till tomorrow, though, to get up there and, you know, play together. Absolutely. Yeah. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. She plays Frankenstein. Remember that song back oh, in the yeah. day? <laughs> she can do it. Da -da -da -da. Yeah, it's great. It's going to be fun. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of And it's such a good cause. Uh, yeah. 
And when I get back, uh, when I go back to, to uh, Texas next week, I'll be working with an outfit called Beat Cancer. That they're uh, they're going, they're traveling all around all over the all over the U.S. and and documenting people's statements, and they're doing performances, and they're tr they're trying to make a statement with music instead of like the walks or the runs kind of thing. It has to do with uh, a musical endeavor, and they're they're going to have about three thousand people uh, uh, at uh, the State Fair Music Hall, and they're going to record everybody right. singing this song, and and uh, they're going to probably make a movie out of it. They're documenting it, document documenting it, uh, <laughs> and doing interviews and things like that. So. Uh, I'm I'm glad to be doing things for the benefit of the victims of child abuse and mm -hmm. for breast cancer and just a nice thing to Positive. it's a nice way to uh lend what you bring to the table to something positive. Mhm. Mm Absolutely. And hopefully somehow helps people. Mhm. Mm well, we're going to go take a break and we'll be right back with this amazing story. Only on the Frank Prince Show. Only. On Madhouse TV. <laughs> hey, I'm Tom Mealy from the Harrison Law Group. You know, soft tissue injury, that's no joke. This is what we do. We're not new at this game. Don't waste valuable time going to firms who don't get it and can't do it. Call 1-800-INJURY-LAW. Huntington Toyota, the experience of a lifetime. Don't take our word for it. The experience for me at Huntington Toyota made me feel very comfortable. It's their professionalism, their honesty, and their integrity. I've bought at least nine or ten cars here at Huntington Toyota. They give me the best price around. It never was about high pressure. It never was about them. It was always about us. Today's cars are very similar. But Huntington Toyota is very different. Huntington Toyota, where it's all about you. Brooklyn's best locksmith and hardware. We have three of the largest showrooms of safes on display and in stock. You can see and touch them in person instead of browsing a catalog. We carry gun and rifle safes, burglary safes, jewelry safes, fire rated from a half hour to two hours. Famous name brands. We sell guard all. We sell AMSAC. The new AMSAC touchscreen. If you're ever in need of a safe, think Brooklyn's Best, Locksmith and Hardware. Right, Lockie? That's right, Alan. For professional motorcycle transport and towing, think Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. Proudly serving all of Long Island, we feature expert handling and 24-7 service. So send a limo for your toy with Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. Hmm. Uh, Ray, I don't know. Are you sure clicking this thing will get us online? Well, try dragging it. Hmm. Faster. You're just a mouse click away from a better way to rent movies. Blockbuster Total Access. Movies through the mail plus movies through the store. One low price. Here's the problem. We forgot to plug it in. Oh, don't even think about it. Get a free trial at your Blockbuster store or Blockbuster.com. We're back. Woohoo! Okay, let's talk <laughs> about tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow's a event, BACA. Tomorrow's going to be awesome. BACA, B A C A, Bikers Against Child Abuse. We've got some great acts. We've got uh, a Heart Tribute Band, our band, uh, another band, uh, well, Sister Sister, uh, Dreamboat Annie, uh, another band called Diligence. We've got um, E3. Uh, there's going to be raffles and you know all free free buffet, um, special parking for all the bikers, and uh, like I said, what these guys do and women, uh, if they know of a child that's being abused, whether it be sexual, you know, uh, physical, mental, uh, they're there and they check up on these kids and they make sure that 
it stops. You know, whatever, whether they stop it before it happens or they stop it in the middle of it happening or whatever, they go to the child's house and they'll, um, uh, just the sound of the motorcycles may stop what's going on in, inside, you know, knock on the door. But uh, they're, uh, they're just amazing people. And they're f for the kids 24-7. Doesn't matter what time of night it is or whatever. If, they get a, if there's a child that, that's going to be abused in any way, they are there. That kid can always depend on that, on, on Baca to, uh, to be there for them. So they're just... Uh, and they have chapters all over the all place. All over the world. All over the world. This is, just happens to be the Long Island chapter. But uh, they're global. They are just... Uh, which is wonderful. It's great people take a stand and do this. And let me tell you, these bikers, as burly looking and tatted up or whatever, biggest sweethearts in the world. They're like teddy bears, you know? They've got the biggest hearts. You know, like any bike, bikers, child abuse, you know, they do breast cancer runs, they toys for tots. You know, bikers are like the most amazing people ever in the world. And you see, when you see these guys and women, they're just, you know, the whole thing is about the children. Their face, you know, they light up when they know they've done something good for them. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be great. And it's going to be at uh, Richie B's Diamond Club in Ronkonkoma. It's indoors, which is nice. Um, free buffet. I think it's $10, $10 a head to get in. Uh, the bike run itself starts at Renegade Classics in Deer Park on Comac Road. Uh, registration is from 9, 9 in the morning to, I think, 11. Um, it's a, you know, ride at your own pace run, so there's no rushing around or anything. It's a secret, I think it's called a secret clue run. So they give you little clues. You have to go to, like, 7-Eleven and get the manager's name and stuff. And it, you just go, you know, they end up at the uh, after-run party. And, uh, you know, they get prizes and whatnot. And uh, they're done having a Chinese auction and, uh, and like I said, the 50-50 and the raffles. And it's just going to be great. It's going to be a really good time. So we're looking forward to it. I'll know. be there. Yeah, and you the, know, the, the debut. Support. You support. You? I know you'll be there. You're the best. You're the best. You support everything. You're wonderful. Yeah. So this is my third year of doing Baca. Uh, it's been a different band each time, um, and I think it's the first time yeah. you're doing it. Yeah. So, yeah. And actually, that's she's been through a lot the past year and a half too with surgeries, with the breast cancer surgery. Then she had heart surgery, and her daughter got married. So everything was being pushed. Like she kept wanting to come to New York, but yeah. everything kept, kept being pushed back. And then. Uh, when she found out about the Baca thing, she was, oh, that's it. I'm definitely coming, and that's the week I'm going to come because she wanted to perform. And then right before she was going to come to New York, she finds out she needs knee surgery. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, no way. I'm going to New York. I don't care what happens. I'm hella high water. <laughs> I'm going there. I'll deal with the knee when I get back to Texas. That's she right. Said, that's so, right. Uh, yeah. She says, no, I can't. There's always something that was getting in the way of her coming here. And this time she said, nope, I'm, I'm going. So, and how was that, you know? It was great to see her. Yeah. Wild. I'm not going to want you to go. <laughs> I know. I know. I can see it's you coming be... back. Yeah. She actually said something What's about... What's out there in Texas? What do they have opposed to New York? Oh. It's different. Texans. <laughs> Texans, I know. Guns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Everybody... Well, we got I'm guns here, too. I'm not going to Texas. <laughs> they <laughs> see me, they might shoot me. <laughs> Well, it's, uh, I live in Denton, Texas, which is just an hour north of Dallas, and it has uh, the world acclaimed one o'clock lab band there, uh, which is jazz. It's like a Juilliard kind of thing, and the Texas Women's University, and it's a small town uh, with the... Um, uh, like the town square kind of thing, you know, uh, and it's very laid back and, and very cheap. It's very live cheap. There. That's what I <laughs> And lots of countryside, and there's people around that are raising longhorns because they almost became extinct. So you'll drive around and you'll see some longhorn cattle sometimes and things like that. Uh, so. Uh, I used to live in the Dallas area for a long time, but I decided I wanted to get out of the fray just a little bit. So, and also they have the uh, 35 North 
uh, uh, festival every year, which is a week before South by Southwest in Austin. So now a lot of acts are coming in and they're playing there the week before, and then they go to South by Southwest. So it's becoming a, every year it's about triples, you know, so it's getting to be a big draw for that as well. And there's a lot of eclectic acts and, and new music and uh, uh, just a really strong musical community there, especially for it to be a, a small. So it's uh, Nora Jones came out of there and uh, Sarah Hickman and it, there've just been a number of, I think the Marcellus brothers went there and that. So, it's a p pretty cool place, yeah. so I've I've been I've really been liking it. Very laid back, you know. It's almost like Mayberry, almost. You know, <laughs> Mayberry RFC. <laughs> compared to Long Island, is like yeah, Mayberry. I think <laughs> anything's compared to Long Island. <laughs> Mayberry RFC. I mean, she's. Got We're so opposite. I mean, there've been yeah. it's so opposite in some ways, and yet exactly the same. Exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. So. She'll say something, and I'm like, get out of my head. Like, I'm just going to say the same thing, <laughs> you know? And it's just, that's, that's how you know that, that, that gene stuff is, it's, it's no it's, joke. It's, it's no there's joke. truth there's, to it, yeah, you know? Yeah, You know, things that, uh, just, you know, just things that we talk about and the clothes. And, you know, I look like, oh, I love that. I love your shoes, you know? <laughs> it's great. But, um yeah, and talking about taxes, you said your apartment's about the same size as mine. Yeah, yeah. And I pay $1,000 a month, and you pay? 315 $315 a month. <laughs> she pays for her apartment in Texas. <laughs> yeah. And I said to her, well, it must be like, no, same size as yours. She goes, I'm like, oh, my God, kidding. Yeah. But uh, everything is just great. Actually, she's going to meet my mom on... Uh, well, so meet her again. It's been, I, I did meet her when I was a little girl, but I haven't seen her since no. those years. So, so I'm, I'm looking long. forward to, to, to seeing her too. Yeah. But uh, hopefully in the future, we'll, we'll get to do more stuff together. I don't know why we wouldn't, you know. Yeah. I just think it would be, it would be a, it's a pretty unique kind of thing. I don't think I've ever heard of anything no. like this. And, and we didn't go into it to just be unique. It just happened. Mm -hmm. It just came Things together. So it just fell. Everything, yeah. Yeah. It was strange. Yeah. Just and we both were going, place. do you believe this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who does this? Right. <laughs> so well, there it is. We're, we're proud. Out of, we're out of time. Okay. And thank you all for watching. I love you all. Mm -hmm. And I'll see you next week with comedian Monica Tower. Same time. Have a great week. Thank you all Thanks. for watching. Thank you, Frankie.